All right, take two. So Jeff Forrester here. I am coming to you live right here from my driveway in Kingwood, Texas. So I'm doing my first video demonstration and I wanted to start with coil pots and coil building so my intro people don't miss a, a step. That's the last big project they had for the semester. And the first video is just gonna be basic rolling technique and building a small kind of hourglass shape with coils. And so basically I have people do this project as a practice piece and then the next assignment or project is to reconstruct a historical vessel in proportion. So as an example, and disregard my poor sketch, but you're looking hopefully for something symmetrical, that being just as wide on the bottom as it is on the top and equal height. And the dimensions I've listed here in inches are just a guideline. So if you wanna make that larger, you're welcome to do that, make it smaller, what have you. The real point is just learning how to properly roll and build with coils. All right, so I'm gonna tuck that away for a second. So the first thing I do is I just pull off a piece of clay and start squeezing it into a coil-like shape. And I figure this way I get it started and I have less rolling to do when it comes time to do that. But also I've talked a lot in classes about compressing clay molecules to make it stronger. So essentially I'm also doing that here. All right. So I'm just going to pinch some of these out. It's my first video and I'm going to tell you I feel a little bit awkward talking to a video recorder and it's really strange not having an audience actually engaging me and asking me questions as I do this. But that's why we're having the video conference meeting so people have an opportunity to do that and potentially could even be working on a piece while they have me on video chat. So, I'm just going to get some of those started. One, one thing you have to be really diligent about is when you start rolling these out, keeping them under plastic. You don't want to let coils just sitting out on canvas because as they get thinner, there's more surface area that's exposed to air and it's going to dry much quicker than, say, this ball of clay would sitting on the table, right? So what I'm going to do is actually get up, walk around, and zoom that camera in a little bit. You're going to lose my face here, but I'm going to give you a better view of what I'm actually doing when I roll these things. So bear with me for one second. All right, and we're back. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these little rope-like shapes and I'm going to try to roll these into symmetrical coils and for this project anything like maybe pencil diameter and even up to like a dimes diameter would be sufficient. You probably, well it would be unnecessary to build any bigger than that and if you wanted to try to push to a thinner walled vessel you could do really thin coils but it could be more difficult. So there will be a slightly greater challenge there. Anyhow, what I'm going to do is I'm actually fanning my fingers out, right? And then very light and consistent pressure. I'm gonna roll, go back and forth, side to side. If I see a thicker spot, I'll focus on it for a little bit. But really the key is a light and consistent pressure. You shouldn't have to push on this very hard at all, and especially if your clay is at a proper moisture content. If you're having to apply force to roll your coil, your clay is probably too stiff and going to be problematic and for other things. And so once I have this coil made, I'm going to go ahead and put that in my plastic bag to keep it damp and roll a few more out. And you, you really could do this any number of ways. You could roll them as you use them. You could roll a bunch in advance and then come back to them and just start building. So I'm going to go ahead, since I've already squeezed a number of them out here, go ahead and roll them.
and I would I would really practice shooting for a consistent diameter. Now the the second tier of the intro class, I do a slightly different building process, and a lot of people have probably seen that already, especially if they've been in the studio at Glassell. And that's just essentially building with strips of slabs and allows you to build up faster. And I'm going to do a video using that process as well to share with you. And the more coils you roll, believe it or not, the easier it gets. And like everything else in clay, it's probably harder than it appears. Alright, so the coil rolling process, I've got just one of my little ropes left here. And so, a couple of things to keep in mind. As, as you're rolling the coils, it's very possible you're going to get a flat spot at some point. When that happens, I just turn that up and push it back down. Try to keep it as close to, this is kind of squared off now, but it's closer, a square is closer to circular than a flat rectangle, right? And then I just resume by light pressure. And so typically what causes that and the mistake most people make when they first start trying to roll coils is that when they come forward and stop or come back and stop they change the amount of pressure they're applying so it's really a very light touch and trying to have a consistent amount of pressure so to start this thing off I'm gonna make a base or a floor and I'm gonna do that simply by rolling this up in a little spiral and so you can see I'm supporting on the back side here with a thumb and then applying some pressure in. I want to make sure that this coil I'm not totally smashing it but I want some pressure to make sure it's really adhering to the previous coil. And then when I get a spot like so where it terminates I always want to blend in that seam. So just kind of blending that in. Alright, don't want any seams in the end. Alright, so that's not quite wide enough. I will, I'll actually shoot for doing that similar thing there. So I've got my little sketch of my hourglass here outside of camera view. So I'm going to start this next coil right where I terminated the last coil. And then I'm proceeding to just kind of spin that around, applying pressure, making sure the new coil is adhering to the old coil, blending the end, and then, so this looks thicker actually than I need it to be. So what I'm going to do now is I've got this spiral front and back or top and bottom is I'm going to eliminate that. So supporting this edge, right, I'm going to start in the middle and blend that top surface of clay to the outside. Now I'm not applying a lot of pressure just enough to move that top kind of skin or surface of the clay. And I'm supporting out here because what I don't want to do is pull this out and then end up pulling that coil away from the base, right? So, put that back in there. So I'm supporting on the outside and then kind of smearing clay across to it. And then once I've done that whole side and it's smooth, I'm going to flip that over and do the same thing on the other side. Now the difference is, remember I went from the inside out before, right? So now I want to go from the outside in. And that, that actually is a really good technique for two reasons. One is that 
If I blend from the inside out on both sides, I'm going to have a really thin inside and a really thick outside, right? So this is going to keep it more consistent as far as the thickness goes, right? And then the other thing is that it really aids in eliminating any seams that might go all the way through the piece. So once I've done that, I'm just going to kind of pinch this. I'm looking for, I don't know, say maybe a half inch thickness or so. And really that, that can be variable. I probably would not go more than three quarter inches. That would be definitely excessive on something this small. But a half inch to maybe three eighth inch would be actually a better ideal width. So, I've got this. So, since the quarantine, I've not got a spectacular studio space set up at home yet, which is one of the reasons I'm in the driveway right now, besides the fact that it's gorgeous outside. And we don't have too many months of that left in Houston. So, now what I can do is kind of cheat this thing. So what I'm going to do is just find something round to lie on here and then cut out a more perfect circle. And the roll tape should do the trick. Alright, don't got a lot of extra but, you know, let me just I'm going to stretch it out just a little bit more just to fit that roll of tape. And the nice thing is I can use that again on the top to make sure I'm staying to a consistent diameter top and bottom. So it's kind of like my little template or my stencil here. And you could use an old Tupperware or a can of spray paint or jar of underglaze, whatever you got floating around that's round. Although most of those things might be a little slightly narrower in diameter than what you're looking for for this. And then if, if that clay is still soft, I'm just going to throw that back in my bag with the other soft clay. Try to not waste anything if I can help it. Alright, so I've got my floor. Now what I want to do is start building this thing up, right? Building some walls. And so, what I'm going to do is start by just lying this first coil right on the outside perimeter and again whenever you start or terminate a coil you want to blend that in right I don't want a loose end there and then same concept is I'm applying a little pressure down when I put this coil down I want to make sure that it's adhering and certainly I want to make sure that I'm not going to have a gap or a space in there like an air source. So that coil comes to an end, so terminate, blend that in. Alright, and if I wanted to at this point I could blend these coils. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more before I do that. this up a little bit, blending that seam, starting a new coil, so I'm blend, blending that end in, and you, you might also notice, I'm not sure if you can tell in the digital video there, but I'm starting to kind of lie the coils a little bit more on the inside edge instead of right directly on top of the previous coil and so that that allows me to start having it kind of come in right I'm trying to if I'm doing an hourglass shape I want to really build this in and kind of the point of the exercise or the project is really just to learn how to control the the coils not just to build with the coils but learn how to control the coil to create shapes right different shapes 
and then practice that blending process so that when you do a bigger project that you're spending more time on, you're not going to have cracking issues in the seams afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead and start right at the bottom of the, see the, the bottom there is the base. I'm going right underneath there on the corner and pulling that up. Right, and the same thing, I've got a thumb on top holding that outside wall in place. I don't want to inadvertently lift this coil off as I'm blending. I think one of the great things about coil building is you need almost no tools, right? Essentially, you could do it all by hand if you wanted to, and probably most of the early, early coil pots were probably done all by hand. So, I am going to just kind of pinch and shape this a little bit. So, one tool that would certainly make this really much easier is a banding wheel. If you don't know what a banding wheel is, that's like the Lazy Susan device that we have in the studio. Alright, I can kind of cup it, choke it. So, I just got done telling you, you could do this whole process by hand, right? Some people actually prefer a wood knife or a spoon or some other device that you can take and blend. So I could use the, the blunt or broad side of this, right, and kind of use it to smooth and blend these coils in. You probably have already noticed that because I went up from the bottom on the outside, I'm going down from the top on the inside when I blend. And for extra credit, that's right, I want to eliminate any possibility of seams. I'm talking to my imaginary audience who won't be imaginary indefinitely, which is interesting. So, I've done that, I am going to go ahead and lay the next coil and try to really start to choke this in a little bit. So I'm going to actually lie the coil just on the inside of the lip here, alright. forgot to blend that end in. That would have been bad, right? And then go ahead and pinch these gently. That's that pressure. Make sure they're adhering. And it's kind of going just on the inside. It's still coming up to some degree. Pinch that. So, I'm going to go ahead and blend the inside down. Just kind of turning this with my hand as I go. Really, the most fail safe way to do this is to inspect it inside and out and make sure you don't see anything that looks like evidence of a seam when you're done. Alright, so. Blending the top coils in. So let me turn this around to your side. 
you can kind of see, let's see here, you can kind of see the seams right here in the coils, right? So, supporting from the inside on that top coil and then just blending up. Nothing like creating a little challenge for myself and working backwards for the camera. Alright, so can choke that in. I'll tell you one really good way to know if you're staying symmetrical and maybe the best way is to just step back from your piece look at it from a distance and from all the sides and you'll start to see like I'm looking straight another way is to look straight down and kind of look where your opening is and how that ring sits over this ring right if you can Envision the contour of the base as just a ring and then where this ring is sitting over it and right now the whole thing is shifted this way so And if I if I were to get up and walk away I might be able to see that too, but more importantly I can look at the outside contour of the walls and kind of envision those as lines and make sure that this line matches that line right Hopefully that makes sense all right so i've got a tape measure here any ruler or measuring device will work like the roll of tape it doesn't even have to be a measuring device necessarily as long as it's a consistent length so i've got four inch base and I, and I actually measured across and across. You could even go like multiple times if you wanted to. Make sure it's four inches all the way around. Or whatever dimension you're shooting for. And then I'm looking at... Looks like just over three inches, just under three inches. There's a number of ways I could address that so I could just take a really short a small coil and kind of add that to the low spot and of course the other option would be to cut it off all level so that it matches the low spot cut the high parts down I'm gonna do this first and then do that process Make sure that's all blended together well first. Alright, and I didn't bring a fettling knife. Sharper knife would be a good thing to have right now. Alright, looking symmetrical. Get something to cut this with. I guess I'll use my wooden knife here. So, one second. Be right back here. I've got here a fire brick. How many people do you know that have fire brick lining their driveway? All right. Future kiln right here. All right, that's a little bit low. What I'm trying to do is bring this level to the low, the low point. All right, so looks like I've got, I don't know, a half inch or so. Let me see if I got a little piece of ply, or not, yeah, plywood to slide under this. All right, not a piece of plywood, but probably close to the right dimension height 
I'm going to put that lid under the brick. I'm going to lay my knife up here. Banding wheel again would come in really handy for this. And first I'm just going to very slowly spin this. I'm holding my knife down flat. And basically I'm just etching where I want to line with a consistent height from the tabletop. And then I know where this needs to come off. And just take that excess off of there. So on a larger project, the best thing to do would be just walk away from this at this point and let it stiffen up some. And then when I come would come back to it, if this gets to be like a leather hard consistency where it's not moving around so easily, I would want to score and slip my next coil. Starting to feel some drizzle out here. I hope I don't get rained out. Alright, so there's that. I'm going to look at this, stand up, look at this from above, check its symmetry. Get this out of my way. And... That looks really close symmetrical so another thing a lot of people like to do as they're building is to use a rib whether that's a metal rib or a rubber rib but something flexible is probably good so I can bend this rib to kind of match the contour of the pot and if I support inside and very gently rub up on this I can kind of smooth out blemishes and things, but for the sake of this project, I'm not even going to worry about that. We'll look more at that in another demonstration. So, basically, I'm going to try to repeat this shape in the inverse now. So what I'm going to do is just try to build this up, right? Recreate that same shape upside down. And if you remember, I laid the first, when I was bringing the clay in, I was lying the coil just inside of the top. So if I want to come out, logic tells you what? Ding, ding, correct. For extra credit, once again, you're going to just lay it slightly to the outside, right? And... A lot of how you control the shape is how you blend it. So if I lay the coil on the outside, I'm going to blend that seam. And this is my last coil that I've got pre-rolled. So I think once I get this guy on here, I'm going to speed the video up a little bit. So laying that just to the outside. Blend that seam in, the termination point. And then you can kind of see how that already is wanting to flare out, right? So when I blend it, I can pull and kind of start rolling as I'm blending these coils, the seams. Just kind of start rolling that shape out. And then I, I came up on the inside, so I'm going to blend down on the outside. Table's a little bit lower than I 
we usually work with. Alright, so that's not looking super symmetrical right now. So a little pinching and shaping might be necessary. I always find it easier to make things symmetrical when it's on a wheel and I can be spinning it. And often I've even used the potter's wheel just as a big banding wheel if I have a bigger piece I'm working on. So, the more often I check for symmetry, and reshape it some if I need to, the easier it's going to be to make it symmetrical when I get up to that point, right? Because it'll just keep it in check as you go. All right, we're back, sort of. So, at least most of me is back. Anyhow, so you can see my clay was a little bit too damp still as I was coming up towards the top. So, because the clay is soft, it probably would have been a good idea to let it stiffen up down here. And that way when I get to the end, there's a little bit less of that pushing and pulling and pinching and reshaping to try to get it as symmetrical as I can. Um, if I were actually wanting to save this, I would let this stiffen up to probably stiff leather hard, definitely so it's not, you don't want it super dry, but I don't want it so flexible either. And then I could come back and add a coil to thicken this rim, or even use a rasp or knife to make a cleaner, smoother cut. And honestly, you could finish these however you like. If you want to carve a pattern into the top you could do that if you wanted to actually continue coil building bring it in make a little bottle shape you could do that so really again it's really about the exercise and the practice rolling and manipulating the material um, I can't stress the importance for beginners to learn this process and don't just skip on to the building with slabs that I'm going to show in another video all right Really, you're trying to hone your skills and your facility to work with this material. It's basically the point. So, that said, I hope this helps, and I will look forward to chatting with you live video conference. Take care. Bye.